in people's lives, there's only maybe a half dozen, seven, eight categories that really matter. Most people, you know, they major in minor things. They focus on stuff that doesn't matter. They know more about this celebrity going in and out of rehab than they do about their own personal development. But I look at, say, if you look at your body, without that, everything else is out the door. You don't want to be richest man in the graveyard. That's not going to do it. If there's energy, if there's vitality, if there's strength, it's going to show up in your relationship. It's going to show up in your business. It's going to show up in your life. That's it. you got to master. You can't dabble. It's too important. Emotions are everything. I mean, you got a ton of money, you got everybody loves you, and your primary emotions are pissed off and frustrated, then your life's pissed off and frustrated. It doesn't matter if you got a billion dollars or a million people loving you, your life is not great. Relationships, intimate relationships especially, it's where the most juice in life comes from, it's where the most pain comes from most people. It's worth mastering instead of dabbling. You know, really looking at what are you going to do with your time? And mastering your time, instead of having a checklist, you cross it all off, you can mistake movement for achievement. I, I want to squeeze out of that time what matters, that creates value for me and for everyone I care about and love. What about your career or your business? And the mastery of that has been a dabbling. Most, most businesses are dabblers. That's why they don't make it. 96%, you know, in any 10 year period of time, 4% make it. That doesn't even mean they're profitable. And it does not mean they're enjoying themselves, all right? Or they're getting anybody else to feel good. Really mastering money so that it's it's not a question in your life you can do and be and give and share as much as you want you're not stressed about it you live in a place of abundance and then spiritually really i think now i don't tell people what to believe spiritually but i believe that ultimately whatever you believe you got to live it and it should lead to growing and giving everything in your life happens for a reason your responsibility is to look at these things in your life and ask this question, why now? You need activation energy to start the chain, to start to sit down, to start to get out of bed, to start to walk out the door. That's the key to creating any kind of change. This activation energy inside of you that causes the initial boom. And then what do we hear over time? Once you start, there's a chain reaction and that allows you to keep going most basic answer I'm sorry it's so simple but it's true it's fear people make it this complex process this woman's told me that I don't understand why I don't do this why I feel this way it's, it's called fear everybody's afraid we're not enough everybody's afraid we're not rich enough smart enough young enough quick enough fast enough it's human nature but the secret is to do it anyway I know that sounds so simplistic my work when I'm working with somebody is showing how to condition themselves like building a muscle so that you take action first automatically because if you don't do that it's hard you lose momentum it's like how do I get started where do I go do anything <laughs> to start the process of moving forward rather than let fear stop you if your goals are easy to achieve they are not big enough set bigger goals Goals that excite you and scare you at the same time. If it is important to you, you will make it happen. If it is not, you will find an excuse. How bad do you want it? I want to reassure you that you can do it. I want you to reassure you that you can make the decision. I want to reassure you that no matter what the night, no matter what the storm, no matter what the difficulty, there isn't anybody here that can't figure it out, find some things to do, step at a time, yes. Minute at a time, yes. Day at a time, yes. Week at a time, yes. But there isn't anything you can't walk away from. There isn't any challenge you can't overcome. I want you to have that kind of belief in yourself. The mindset of moving past fears and insecurities and making sure you want something so desperately that you're willing to work for it. But half of changing is action, the hardest part. It requires discipline, devotion, and determination. Know what you're going after. Now you say amen to that, but there's very few people who live by that principle. Most people want everything they see somebody else with. They, they buy clothes that don't look good on them. They wear hairstyles that don't look good on them. They, they buy houses they can't afford because they're trying to keep up with somebody else. But if you really want to be a winner, if you really want to come off as successful, if you really want to be bright, only go after things that are meant for you to have. It will make you look successful. And what makes you look bright is when you pick your battles. 
There are some things that you don't fight because that's not your fight. You don't get into that thing. You don't pick those battles. You don't covet what you see somebody else fight down because they're anointed to fight that. They can do that. You might not be gifted to fight that area and you don't want to covet somebody else's battle or covet somebody else's success. Invest your time to walk and sweat on your journey. Be the winner. Become the winner. Build up your life to become something. You're not over. Your opportunity never ended. This is your time to become something. Covet, and the other word I want you to think about is the word envy. Because envy is the attitude that you have about other people's success. When you become envious of other people's success, you fail to become everything that God would have you to be. And the quickest way to stop being envious of other people's success is to know that God has something for you that everything in your life is preparing you for that thing, that there are in your life defining moments. This is a critical issue. There are in your life defining moments, moments that if you handle properly, they are pivotal points that change your life for a lifetime. It is at these moments that if you know what you're going after, everything that you went through before is justified in preparing you for these defining moments. There is a battle between logic and emotion. Emotion always, always, always wins. How many of you have gone to a really high building, an enclosed building like the top story of a hotel or the CN Tower in Toronto and looked down and thought, oh, wow, I feel really scared. My logic, my nose, that I'm safe, that the glass is that thick, that I can't fall. But the emotion that's making my stomach lurch is winning. So when you have a battle between emotion and logic, emotion always, always, always wins. Here's something you all know. We can all ring our friend up and go, I'm a bit bored, a bit lonely. Can I hang out? I'm a bit bored. Let's go to the movie. You would never ring someone you've just met and go, I'm bored and lonely. Will you come and hang out with me? Let's go to the movie. Because the emotion that you might be rejected will overrule the logic that says this person may be the person for me. So if you're having a battle between yourself, here's a great one. I know I shouldn't eat cake. That's the logic, but the emotion is, oh, the cake feels so good and this creamy, sugary stuff reminds me of being a baby when all my needs were met by having creamy, sugary stuff. So in a battle between emotion and logic, logic will never win. Emotion will always win. And you can make that win for you by making it a better emotion. So here's how to do it. Here's an emotion. I'm scared to ask for a pay rise in case my boss laughs me out of the office. Make it a stronger emotion. If I go to my boss and show them what I've done, how valuable I am. That won't happen. Here's an emotion. I really want to ask that person on a date. I'm not good enough. Change the emotion. I'm wonderful. I'm amazing. What could I get from asking someone on a date that says yes? So much. And if they say no, I'm only exactly where I was before, except I've been brave. I've done something courageous, I've taken action, even if it doesn't work out, I've lost nothing, but I've gained courage. So when you're having a battle between logic and emotion, emotion always wins, logic never wins. That's why you could stand on the windowsill of your apartment if it was on the ground floor, but you would never stand on the windowsill, same size if it was a hundred stories up, because the emotion that you may fall to defeat the logic that says I can do this when it's a few feet off the ground. Why can't I do it up here? Because emotion overall 
was logic. You can make your life phenomenal, extraordinary, and wonderful by always using emotion to defeat emotion. You know, Dr. Max von Maltz wrote a book back around 1960. It was called Self-Image Psychology, Psycho-Cybernetics. It's a phenomenal book. He said it was the greatest discovery of his generation. He was a cosmetic or a reconstructive surgeon. And he found he would do work on people. He might have been a nose job or removed a terrible scar. And he noticed that when he did that, there was a phenomenal change in their personality. But he noticed with others, he would make a phenomenal physical change and there was no change in their personality. And that led him to postulate that we have two images. We have the one that's coming back from the mirror, but we've got an inner image. And that inner self-image is literally controlling our life. You will find people that have a very poor self-image or low self-esteem. They won't look you straight in the eye. They're afraid to shake hands with you. They're very shy and withdrawn. They go through life hiding from life. They don't like themselves. They don't know themselves. Do you know? a person improves their self-image, they change their entire life. Their income changes, their relationship changes, their health changes. And you know how you do that? Start studying you. Start to find out more about you. There's something phenomenal about you. Do you know when I began to study this material 57 years ago, I had very poor self-image. I had low self-esteem. I took dumb jobs. I never earned any money. I never had fun. I had poor relationships. And as I started to study, started to study real solid information, everything in my life started to improve. I've got friends all over the world today. I earn millions of dollars. I'm in my 80s and I get as much energy as a person in their 30s. You see, when you start to understand really who you are, you're God's highest form of creation. There's things about you that just about blow your mind as you start to study and really understand them. You'll walk a little taller. You'll stand a little straighter, and you know something? You'll enjoy a whole lot more of life.